Of every single Dragon Ball game that was ever released, Budokai Tenkaichi was one of my favorites, possibly my most favorite. So when Sparking Zero was announced, I was super excited. Now that I've played it, I can happily say the game lives up to my expectations and exceeds them in some aspects, like with custom battles. Unfortunately, it doesn't necessarily live up to my hopes for Steam Deck play. So in this video, I'm going to go over how Dragon Ball Sparking Zero is running on the Steam Deck, my recommended settings, and whether or not you should play it on the go just yet. If you want to see more videos like this, hit that like and subscribe button, and hit the notification bell to be notified as soon as our next video goes live. The game was also recorded on the Steam Deck directly, so your experience may be slightly different than what you're going to be seeing in this video. I love Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. It's an awesome game, but I really wish I could love it just as much on the Steam Deck. The game can be very demanding and quite tough to play, purely because it needs to be played at 60 frames per second. The game is hard-coded to run at 60, so if it slips any lower than 60, the game will slow to a crawl. This means we can't try to set the frame rate lower due to the game slowing down if it's anything lower than 60, and boy do we need to. Even at the lowest possible settings, at a forced resolution of 800 by 500, the game will still find pockets that can drop to 45 frames per second or slightly lower. With the game tied to the frame rate, it can really feel like everything is slowing down if we go anywhere lower, so it's kind of a catch-22. This appears to be a CPU issue, since the CPU usage and battery drain is quite high, while GPU usage never hits 99% or drains a lot. And unfortunately, there isn't much we can do to work around it. Lowering the frame rate would only help the GPU, so the CPU is still going to be hit hard, and with all of this on the lowest possible settings, there's not much we can do to help out. So the most we can do is mitigate any GPU issues that we could encounter, and there are some if we try to go to higher quality settings. The good thing is that this is an anime game, so it still looks decent even with the lower visuals, and I wasn't really phased by it during battle. But if you're looking at the characters at the menus, it was a little bit brutal. With most settings on low and resolution rendering set to 60 and no TDP limit, the game is technically playable and sticks to 55 to 60 frames per second for the bulk of battles. There can be some intense moments when there's a lot going on or you're very close to both characters and it can drop to the 40s, and it is noticeable due to the slowdown, but it's still playable. I won't say it's unplayable since I was able to get through a lot of battles without too much hassle, but it's definitely annoying and not something I would want for any online or competitive play against friends. If you have no other way to play, then you can technically play this way and enjoy it for the most part but I would recommend getting it on a more powerful PC or console if you plan to do multiplayer online or offline. If you have a desktop PC, this is probably a perfect way to practice alone in single player and then go back to your more powerful desktop PC for more competitive multiplayer. It can be bothersome when the game completely slows down due to the locked 60 frame per second logic. And Sparking Zero is really amazing, so I was really hoping for a better experience. But it's just not there yet. Hopefully there's going to be some patches from Bandai Namco to fix this a little bit, but unfortunately, it's just not there yet. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like and subscribe button and hit the notification bell to be notified as soon as our next video goes live. And a big thank you to our patrons. You guys are awesome. See you next time.